Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, a six-year-old was watching a movie about the life of Jesus with her family. This happens during this time of the year. She watched as Jesus was beaten and scourged and finally hung on a cross. As she watched Jesus breathe his last, a tear rolled down her eye as she began to sob quietly. She then watched as Jesus' body was taken down and laid in a tomb. She watched as a stone was rolled in front of the entrance and a guard was posted at the entrance. Then a smile began to appear on her face and spread across her face. She jumped up on the couch and exclaimed, Now comes the good part. Well, this morning we too get the good part in reading in Matthew that the tomb is empty. As we hear the angel explain to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. The good part is good news. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead, not revived or resuscitated as in the case of Lazarus, who was revived but later died again. No, Jesus was raised to new life. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary encounter the risen Jesus as they, up, as they hurry to tell the other disciples this wonderful, great news. They take a hold of his feet and they worship him. He is alive. A knowing that Jesus has been raised from the dead gives us hope because through his resurrection into new life, we've also been given life. We've been freed from the clutches of sin, death, and even the devil. You know, a lot has been written on the meaning and significance of the resurrection. And in seminary, we spend a lot of time delving into all of the intricacies of the theology behind the resurrection. We read what Luther has to say about it, what other scholars have to say about it. We listen to plenty of lectures from our professors and what they have to say about it. And hopefully over the course of time, together in these coming weeks, we can delve into some of these wonderful details. But today I'm not here to outline all those intricacies. Given all afternoon and all day and into next week, I probably couldn't do it. There's just too much to say. But what I want to do this morning is to remind you that the good news is that Jesus is risen. So that that news might ring out into the world loudly and clearly. It's news that's so great that it's worth sharing time and time again. Now, I find it interesting and quite telling for us that Matthew doesn't elaborate on the meaning of Jesus' resurrection in his gospel account. What we might define as an elegant act of narrative succinctness, he just simply announces Jesus' resurrection and tells how the disciples were commanded to go and spread that word. You see, it's the mark of a good storyteller not to wreck the telling of a good story. To interrupt the proclamation of the good news, to explain the resurrection, would be like souring a great musical performance by describing the music while the performance is still taking place. You just don't do it. You let the music do the talking. Just like with a good story, you let the story do the talking. Now, to be sure, there's no amount of explanation that can adequately explain or capture the meaning or the significance of Jesus' resurrection. The Gospel of John famously ends by saying that all the books in the world could not fully describe all the signs that Jesus did. Now, in a similar vein, the Gospel of Matthew, perhaps aware of uh, the words, that all the words of the world could not explain the meaning of the resurrection, simply announces... Jesus has been raised. Yes, the tomb could not contain Jesus, and neither can Matthew's story. That's because Jesus continues on in a much larger story, in a much larger narrative. 
It continues on to bring fruition, to bring completion to God's plan of redemption for all creation when he comes again. He continues on to bridge together the already but not yet, to bring fulfillment to God's kingdom that has already broken into our troubled, sinful world, but is not yet what it will ultimately be. See, that's the really awesome thing about our Holy Scripture. It tells the great story of God's creation and redemption of the world all the way from Genesis all the way into Revelation. In this way, the Bible is much more than a collection of stories that offer individual bits and pieces about God. The Bible is one story. It is the story of all stories. And we know how that story ends. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we too will have fellowship with God for an eternity. As John writes in Revelation, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, or crying, or pain, for the former things have passed away. The life that we now live together, we live in trust and hope. Believing that God will one day bring about the completion of that story, just as he said he would. We believe knowing that God makes good on all he's promised to do. And in the meantime, he hasn't left us alone. He's left us with his word and with the sacraments. He's left us with the promise that we will see him when we turn to the scriptures and when we are joined to, to Jesus' body and the water of baptism. Or that he will be fully present in body and blood when we go to the communion table and partake of the bread and wine. You see, God has given us his word that he will be with us until the end of the world. He's given us his word that through him we might have life everlasting. And that's a promise for all time and for all the world. In other words, the gospel, the good news about Jesus, about his resurrection from the dead, has implications that reach far beyond the walls of faith and the church, far beyond the town of faith, far beyond Roman County, the state of North Carolina, the United States, and even our great continent of North America. The good news is news for all people, all across the globe. May our prayer the cry of all our hearts be that every man, woman, and child know Jesus and his great love for them. A love so great that not even the grave could contain it. May all the world come to know the words that we boldly proclaim today and every day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.